ゴロホール。It's been a while. I hope you all are doing well. As I'm sure you all know, I've been on a journey of self discovery these last couple months. I read Edward Snowden's new autobiography, and honestly, it changed my life. I also saw the new Joker movie, and honestly, it changed my life. And then I tried Vegemite, and honestly, it changed my life. But you're probably not here to listen to me talk about that, considering none of that is in the title of this video. So instead, we're going to take a deep, hard, throbbing look at the lore tablets located at the very beginning of Hollow Knight. For being the first lore tablets we see, it's surprising how little I've discussed them. I briefly went over them in that one MatPat response video I made, but that video was bonkers enough without me going on an insane tangent explaining abstract concepts like. Souls and true forms and words. But now I think it's time to finally get to the bottom of this mystery. These lore tablets are located in an area called the King's Pass. This is basically the tutorial level where the player is taught tricky maneuvers like walking, jumping, and focusing soul. This last ability is specifically taught to the player by reading this first lore tablet. But even if the tablet's main goal is to teach the player a move, there still must be some lore explanation for why the tablet is there. Considering this area is called the King's Pass, it seems likely that these tablets were written, or scribbled, by the Pale King. One thing that separates these tablets from most of the other lore tablets found in the game is how they all start with the same phrase Higher beings, these words are for you alone. So these tablets were left specifically for a group of people known as higher beings. But who exactly are these higher beings supposed to be? Some have argued that the tablets were left for the vessels. After all, the first lore tablet teaches the knight how to focus, a very specific ability seemingly only vessels are shown performing. And the vessels are the children of two gods, so it would be reasonable to call them higher beings. Another interpretation is that these tablets are speaking directly to you, the player. So I guess higher beings in this case would be humans. Not sure how I feel about that. I'm not a huge fan of either of these interpretations. Instead, I'd like to argue that these tablets were specifically written for bugs that traveled to Halonest from the lands beyond. I like this theory because it ties these tablets into other parts of the lore, such as the Mask Maker and the Pale King's Beacon. But be warned, this theory is a little bit out there. You might even call this theory a little speculative, or in other words, nonsense. So please keep an open mind while watching and don't just assume that I'm right. It's entirely possible that we simply don't have enough information to truly answer some of these questions. And that's okay. Let's start with the very first hurdle we have with this theory higher beings. The game uses this phrase a total of six times three in the King's Pass, one in the Howling Cliffs and one in the Ancient Basin, near the entrance to the Abyss. The last time it is used is to refer to the Pale King and the White Lady's union, which resulted in the creation of the worst charm in the game, the King Soul. Now the game never gives us a formal definition of what higher beings are, but we do have a few external sources that mention it. In a Reddit AMA, William Pellin explained that higher beings are creatures that exist above all others, such as the Radiance, the Pale King, and the White Lady. There's also a developer's note found in Hollow Knight's code that states that higher beings are godlike creatures. So by that logic, my theory makes no sense, since the bugs regularly traveling to Hollow Nest were probably not as powerful as the Pale King. But at the same time, it seems highly unlikely that the Pale King would have written these tablets for creatures of immense power like himself. He didn't exactly roll out the welcome wagon for the Radiance after all. So why exactly would the Pale King call regular bugs higher beings? It all ties into the promise of Halonest. The Second King's Pass lore tablet, located next to the Fury of the Fallen charm reads, Let all bask in your majesty, for only this kingdom could produce one such as you. From this tablet we can tell that the higher beings the Pale King is referring to are creatures with abilities produced by Halonest. The lore tablet in the Pale King's throne room tells us that the Pale King's beacon expanded the minds of bugs, 
and the lore tablet in the Howling Cliffs also mentions that the kingdom grants bugs minds. This is further backed up by the Dreamnail dialogue from both the Whispering Root and this chonky bug corpse. So the King's Past tablet says that higher beings are produced by Hallownest, and several sources claim that Hallownest itself expands the minds of bugs. So this must be what the Pale King means when he refers to higher beings. The reason the kingdom is called Hallownest is because that is literally what it is, an area of land hallowed, or made holy, by the Pale King, granting those within it higher thought. So why exactly does William's definition of higher beings conflict with these tablets? Is William on bath salts again? Well, maybe. But another explanation could be that the Pale King is likening his subjects to gods, as a way to make his gifts sound even greater. It's a bit of a lie on his part, and it seems like his main motivation was to earn the devotion of these bugs. But he is still elevating their powers nonetheless. Alright, that's 8 words down. Let's look at the other 21 words. Your great strength marks you amongst us. Focus your soul and you shall achieve feats of which others can only dream. This first sentence appears to parallel a line from the Quarrel comic. Quarrel explains that the path to Hallownest is difficult to achieve, stating that Hallownest accepts only the strong. Of course, this raises the issue of how complete weaklings like Zote and Cloth were able to make it to Hallownest in the first place. But then again, Zote is just too cryptic of a character in general. I've been trying to pin down his political ideology for months now. I mean, is he an authoritarian? An anarchist? Or a libertarian? This next sentence about focusing soul is where things get a bit complicated. Now in the mechanics of Hollow Knight, focusing is when the knight consumes soul in order to repair its shell. But what does it mean for regular bugs to focus soul? This ability seems to be reserved specifically for vessels, and it seems very unlikely that the Pale King wanted his subjects to mess with Soul in that way, considering he condemned the actions of the Soul Master and his followers. To answer why the Pale King would want his subjects to focus their soul, I think we'll need to look at this from a different angle. Let's talk about what the word focus actually means. If we look at how the word is used throughout parts of the game, it appears to link up often with both the use of soul and the use of mind. This might not be true in every case, but I think it's a good framework to work from when discussing this part of the game's lore. Let's start with the Scholars of the Soul Sanctum. These bugs were hoarding soul in some strange attempt to avoid the Radiance's plague as well as achieve immortality. In one of their lore tablets, the Scholars mention a desire to attain a pure focus. Now, your guess is as good as mine as to what that actually means, but it seems safe to assume that it requires an impressive mastery of soul. And we can see that this act took quite a heavy toll on the minds of the scholars, with the soul twisters mentioning how their minds swell and ache. The possibility of a connection between focusing and the mind becomes explicit when we look at the Godseekers. The Godseeker straight up tells the knight that they are using a godly focus to attune to the gods of Hallownest and ascend their own mind. The Weathered Mass description also states that it allows its wearer to focus their thoughts. So in this instance, focusing doesn't seem to be related to soul at all, but it still involves the mind. We also have the Void statue in the Hall of Gods, which reads, Void Given Focus, which in the initial release of Godmaster read, Void Given Mind. This cut text might give us a hint of what is going on here. I have heard some argue that Team Cherry removed the word mind because void in its base form already has a mind. I however think that focus and mind are somewhat interchangeable terms, which is why Team Cherry used one instead of the other. It's hard to say for sure, but I think we're supposed to understand that the Shade Lord is some kind of conscious void being, unlike anything we've really seen before. Now there are more examples we could look at, but hopefully you can see what I'm getting at. Focusing for many characters in Hollow Knight means the use of one's mind in some capacity. The Scholars of the Soul Sanctum strain their minds to try and attain a pure focus, and the Godseekers use their focus in a way to ascend their minds. Let's use that framework when interpreting this final line from the most cryptic bastard in the whole game, Maskmaker. A wonderful thing to have, a face, not a thing with which we are all blessed. For this kingdom's faceless I shall provide. A mask, a face, doesn't need one, 
does it not to define, to focus, to exist. The mask maker is basically equating being able to focus with having a face. To have a face means to exist. So if we say that focusing means having a mind, then the mask maker is saying that a face is required in order to have a mind. I know that sounds stupid and dumb, but if you think about it philosophically, it makes sense. Having sentience or consciousness is paramount to having a sense of self. And what represents the concept of the self better than the face? There's a parallel between this line from Mask Maker and the lore tablet in The King's Pass. Both establish the idea that not everyone is capable of focusing. Or in other words, not everyone has a face. Focusing allows you to achieve feats others can only dream of, while having a face, which lets you focus, is not something with which all are blessed. So in other words, this lore tablet might be saying that Halonest grants bugs faces, which allow them to think. I know that might sound strange, but it actually ties nicely into the second King's Pass lore tablet. Within our lands do not hide your true form. Let all bask in your majesty, for only this kingdom could produce one such as you. So what does true form mean? Well the phrase true form is only used in two other places in the game. It is used in the pure nail description, as well as the ancient mask description. The ancient mask description reads, A complete mask. When whole, a mask protects its wearer, shielding the true form beneath. So this second tablet could be implying that the reader might be wearing some kind of mask in order to hide their true form. They might be wearing this mask as a way to be able to define, focus, and exist, as Mask Maker explains. But this tablet is telling the reader that their mask is no longer needed, implying that this face is now provided by Halonest itself. Now, I know what you're thinking. What the hell is Mossbag talking about? Is he on bath salts again? How does wearing a mask or having a face help you focus? And how does entering Halonest affect any of that? Let's look at the first lore tablet again, the one that tells the reader to focus their soul. Now the use of the word soul here might connect back to the elegy for Halonest. At one point, the poem states that Halonest tamed the savage souls of its subjects. Perhaps this focusing of the soul is how this taming occurs. In other words, Halonest grants bugs the ability to focus their own souls, turning them from savages to civilized bugs. This resulted in the expansion of their minds, as stated in the throne room tablet. This line of thinking implies that bugs outside of Halonest can't focus their soul as well, which could be what we see in the Quirrell comic. The bugs in the wilderness must forego higher thought in order to adapt to the harsh conditions of the land. The elegy for Halonest also states that bugs' base instincts were redeemed. In other words, these bugs have unfavorable instincts, but the Pale King's beacon makes up for these flaws, allowing the bugs to show their true forms without shame. However, it seems like some of these bugs that wandered the wilderness wore masks, since the second King's Pass tablet mentions how these bugs would hide their true forms. We do see travelers wearing masks in-game, particularly the Grim Troop and the God Seekers. But I don't know how representative these characters are of the bugs that routinely travel to Halonest. Okay, so you just witnessed a bunch of mental gymnastics there. These last several minutes were dedicated solely to trying to explain the focus your soul line. And to be perfectly honest, part of me wonders if Team Cherry even intended half of these connections I just made. The fact that they changed that line of dialogue about the void being given focus may indicate that a lot of this stuff might be pretty vague, even to them. But if we take a step back, I think this concept still makes sense in a broader view. Basically, you need a face in order to achieve higher thought or to have an identity. But not everyone is blessed with this naturally, as some numbskulls are only capable of relying on instinct to survive. However, some would wear masks as a way to supplement their savage nature. But then the Pale King came along and promised a world where masks weren't needed. He granted a face to bugs outright, giving them the ability to control their savage nature and achieve higher thought. And now we come to the final Lord Tablet, located right outside the sealed up door to Halonest. Beyond this point you enter the land of King and Creator. Step across this threshold and obey our laws. Bear witness to the last and only civilization, the Eternal Kingdom, Halonest. 
Now this tablet specifically makes it clear to me that these lore tablets are directed at newcomers to the kingdom, and not the vessels or the player directly. These tablets were likely erected during Halloneth's prime, whereas the vessels would have probably appeared much much later, after the kingdom fell. And why would the Pale King be telling us to obey Halloneth's laws? What, is he expecting me to pay taxes or something? But of course, there is another problem with this tablet that we need to discuss. The Pale King calls Halonest the last and only civilization. But we know that was a fucking lie, because there's Farloom, as well as wherever it is Zamir is from. So is the Pale King just unaware of these other kingdoms, or is he purposefully lying to the bugs entering Halonest? I wouldn't be surprised if the Pale King were being a bit dishonest here. After all, his whole motivation appears to be based on accruing worshippers to devote themselves to him. His servants even thought he created the world and everything in it, which obviously isn't true. And that pretty much wraps up these tablets. I should take a moment to address a few counter-arguments to my theory. In the Wanderer's Journal, the character Elena remarks the following when standing next to the locked door in the ancient basin. If only I could decipher the message on the tablet next to the door, perhaps I could figure out how to open it. This dialogue might imply that Elena is completely incapable of reading the lore tablet, which, just like the king's past tablets, begins with the phrase about higher beings. Is it because my assumption about what higher beings means in this context is wrong? Is it because the text is written in a language that Elena can't read? My interpretation is that Elena can read this tablet. However, she can't decipher what the Pale King's message means. Perhaps she thinks that she could open the door if she understood what regrets were hidden in the abyss. Another explanation might be that bugs with higher intelligence already, like Elena, can't read these tablets because they only appear to bugs whose minds were actually elevated by Halonest. Regardless, I don't think this sentence from Elena has to debunk the whole theory. Another issue is how bugs like Zoat, Cornifer, Iselda, and Tiso are perfectly capable of traversing the lands beyond Halonest without seemingly needing to wear masks. My theory doesn't really do anything to address this problem, but it might be due to what species of bugs these characters are. Maskmaker mentions that only some bugs are blessed with a face. Maybe these characters are born with higher thought and don't need any help to show intelligence. I mean, Cornifer is obviously smart. The dude wears glasses after all. Or maybe I'm completely misunderstanding what masks actually do. After all, none of what I've talked about answers why the mask maker has those anime swirly void eye things. Like seriously, what the fuck are those? And does that play any role into why he's wearing a mask? And that leaves a few questions about other bugs in Halnest as well. Did the Vengeflies become higher beings? Or are they still dumb as rocks even with the Pale King's beacon? What about the bugs of Deep Nest? It's unclear if they are in the beacon, since Deep Nest technically isn't part of Halonest. Are these bugs just naturally intelligent? Midwife seems to think so, but she might be a bit biased. This would also imply that mantises, mushrooms, and some of the bees already had the intelligence to focus their soul before the Pale King arrived, which makes it odd that this is never really mentioned anywhere in the game. We just kind of have to assume that they could do this. And that's it for this video. In general, I think it's a compelling argument. But remember, just because something is compelling, that doesn't mean it's right. That's how you get cults like Scientology, and the NSA, and the United States Bowling Congress.